Hi everyone, it's Mike speaking and we've got a very special episode of Creative Suite TV this week. It's night time in regional Victoria and I'm here with my brother James and we've set up his telescope. How are you going James? What, Good, what, 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 what do we think, of, what, what is this thing? How can we describe this unit here? What have we got here? We've got our 8 inch telescope yep. here. 8 inch telescope, What's we've got an extra telescope on the side. We've got a smaller one here on the side, our guide scope. Right, and then Sitting this unit EQ6 mount here. EQ6 mount and, and just some weights down the some bottom just, just to there. work out. Exactly. So I was hoping to take some photos of Uranus. Do uh, it. No, no. <laughs> but uh, a little bit of an astronomy pun. It's year of astronomy, so that's why. We nearly have a full moon. I don't swivel the camera, but we nearly have a full moon over here. So what we've done is we've attached my Nikon D70 to the, what do we call this thing again? The 8-inch. The 8-inch telescope. And we're taking some camera raw files through this telescope of the lunar uh, landscape and we'll call those up in a minute and have a bit of a look um, in camera raw at them but tell me about the setup on the camera like we've got a remote control obviously to avoid the shake by pressing yeah, the button we, but what what have, what settings have we got on the camera right the camera's on manual setting because we yep. don't have any aperture ring on the telescope right so it has to be set to manual if you're using a nikon you, as you said you've got to have the remote control yep to trigger it you don't want to be using your finger Yes. Because that'll set off a vibration. Right. It also limits you to 30 second exposure. So if you want to do a long exposure, you need to buy the Nikon remote control. The remote control, okay. Right. You've got to have that. And and the aperture settings and all the rest of it, we haven't got the ring on this. It's all got to be manual, doesn't it? It's all it? got to be manual. Yeah. You control the exposure with the shutter speed. So yep. you've just got to try different shutter speeds till the exposure looks mm. right. So as you'll see from the photographs um, when we call them up, it's very bright. Um, so. We've, cho we've chosen a few different exposures there so we can get the best detail and we're focusing just by eye tonight, just, aren't we? Tonight, yeah. just by eye. Just by eye. So we hope to get some more spectacular photos, you know, in coming weeks and I might post some on my blog, but I think you'll enjoy seeing some of the photographs we're getting out of this 8-inch special unit. Is that, what, is that right? It's awesome and that's right. It's awesome. Night vision. Gonna love it. We'll see you guys soon. Well, that was certainly a lot of fun taking photographs out there and you can see here's our equipment on the right and there's the camera attached to the uh, mount there my brother certainly wins the prize for the most amount of equipment a couple of technical things um, before we get started that you've got to know we were controlling the uh, telescope with uh, my brother's laptop and we're using some software called PhD now PhD um, is a, a free piece of software and there's some other more technical ones around but this one uh, is quite easy to use. What it does is you uh, attach a USB camera to one of your telescopes and then point it to a star and that's what's going on here and it will actually track the star through the sky and because it's an electronic mount on the telescope it will automatically move the telescope with that star so that you don't get little trails off the back of the star and you can keep it nice and in focus. Speaking about keeping things in focus as well it's something we didn't do but possibly should have was use a Bantanoff mask. Now a Bantanoff mask uh, allows you to focus the camera on or the telescope on a star a lot more easily. We have some diagonal lines that go through when we have the Bantanoff mask on and all we need to do is make sure that we align these diagonal lines so that they go through the center of the star then we know we're on the money. But we didn't have one of those uh, so we didn't do it. it was all a little bit dodgy. As a matter of fact some of our moon shots are a little bit soft and we could have done a better job but Anyway, there you go. These are camera raw files. It's important when you're shooting to have camera raw files because it gives you a lot more leeway in the exposure area. So this is one we took through uh, one of the telescopes there. You can see it is a little bit washed out. Let's ignore that. 
First thing I would do would be set the white balance. So we get the white balance tool and we click on something that should be a neutral color. This is the white balance tool up here. And then simply go ahead and click, boom, and it will take the color out, neutralize it. The other thing I would do, particularly with this moon photograph, is use the clarity slider. So we can drag the clarity slider to the right, and you see it's going to bring out all of those craters and all of that mid-tone contrast. That's what that's all about. We want, because we've got a lot of contrast, we've got black, hopefully we've got a black sky, um, the contrast slider itself isn't going to do us much help. We want the clarity slider, which is going to get all that mid-tone out. So if you're looking at nebulas, if you're looking at a moon shot, that's definitely the way to go. Okay, so you're also going to end up with a lot of noise. Okay, so if you have a dark shot, you're going to have noise in it. Okay, so when we come over to the third tab here, there is a way of reducing noise in a shot or digital noise. So... Uh, the luminance, if we drag the luminance noise reduction to the right, which is just fine grain in it, and also color noise, depending on your camera, you might get a bit of color noise in there. You can use uh, these two sliders to reduce noise because, you know, some of our exposures were upwards of uh, five, six minutes. It's very dark. That's the idea. So you do get a little bit of noise in there, or you can. It's a good idea to get rid of that. Okay. Another technique for removing noise is to take multiple exposures and combine them together. And I'm going to do that. We've got some great shots here of a nebula system. I think it's the Orion Nebula. Couldn't be sure. It's one of those nebulas. Okay. Select the images in Adobe Bridge. This is what we've got. Come up to Tools, down to Photoshop, and we will use load files into Photoshop layers. And Photoshop will automatically open up the images and you can see down the bottom here, stack them onto layers. Okay, so we've got one, two. Now, these are pretty well lined up because we we're pretty careful to make sure that they lined up. However, if they do go off a little bit, and I recommend you do this anyway, select both the layers under the edit menu, just auto align those layers together, the two layers, and it will actually look for the stars and make sure that they're perfectly aligned together. If they weren't to begin with, they certainly will be now. Now, this helps reduce noise because the noise is going to be in different places on the different layers. So here's what we do. All we need to do now is combine these two images together. Because the top exposure is much lighter, we can go ahead and switch that over to something like multiply. It will darken the sky while keeping the, that nebula system there. And now we've got a much nicer looking photograph. I'll just do a before and after. So that's before, that's after. We've got a great nebula system there. We took some galaxy photos, moon photos. It's a whole bunch of fun. Uh, there's a lot of equipment there, but, you know, why wouldn't you try a little bit of um, astronomy photography in this the year of astronomy 2009? Uh, hopefully I'll have some more tips for you in the future as well. I know there's some great ways you can use the stack modes as well with multiple images. Thanks again for tuning in. My name's Mike McHugh, and a big thanks to my brother James for helping out with this episode.